I suppose, Glenn, we've come to Armagh here today yep. to, uh, I suppose, see your farm. Yep. Uh, you're a calf to beef and you have a, a speckled park um, breeding business here, say, as well. That's right, yeah. Um, and I suppose, look, we're, we're in the Archer County as well. That's right. And against the backdrop, we can see a few apples here or whatever. But right. um, maybe if you could tell us a bit about yourself and, and the area we're here today. Okay, so um, we're, in, we're in County Armagh, uh, known as the Orchard County. Typically from here through to Loch Owl, now towards Armagh, uh, you'll see a lot of orchards. Um, we had orchards here at the time, before my time, but you can see remnants of the sweet apple tree stead, a few Bromleys over the, over the way there. But um, I came home, uh, I was in the military for 14 years and came home and started getting interested in farmers. If you, if you rewind six years ago, I couldn't have told you the difference between a bullock and a heifer. Yeah. Um, but uh, when I when I get my head into something, I have to have to know everything about it and start studying. Went to Greenmount and things like that, and started working in the agricultural industry. And luckily enough, you know, my father-in-law has let me get involved in the farming, and he would back any decision or venture that I want to make. Um, we work really well together, and um. Robert's farm, he makes the final decision, but uh, if I've got an idea, he tends to say, right, we'll give it a go. Yeah. Um, so we, at the start, he was, he was sort of buying in store cattle and beefing them. I would say probably grazing 120, housing maybe 100. Um, but he had the acreage for much more, so now we're sort of grazing 250, housing 150, round calf to beef all the way through. Um, now we're selling them into a research farm from Foil Food Group. Um, I used to work for them, and they're buying in all our cattle there, or all our steers at uh, four to five hundred kilo. Mm. Um, and the heifers now that are reared either go to another buyer, or they're kept as uh, recipients uh, to to back up that pedigree uh, enterprise. Uh, although it's in its infancy, we need them heifers coming through to get these embryos that we have imported from Canada hitting the ground. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's what we're that's what we're sort of up to. Every animal that you'll see on this farm, bar these now pedigree and a bit of commercial stock over the way, we're reared here from a calf and we're rearing about. We weaned our 700th calf last week, so we're getting through them in the last sort of, and we're only in it three years. So okay. okay. We're, we're pushing on with the calf to beef. And, um, so you work with Agritech as well? Work with Agritech, yep. Yeah. Um, so what are you selling for them? Tipperary grass seed would probably be their, their number one product that, that would be w most well known, but they have really pushed out into the calf, uh, calf products and minerals and uh, things like that. But uh, my biggest seller would be the calf milk because they can prove the concept here at home Yeah. Uh, with a high 24% milk inclusion, mm. um, protein, sorry, and 20% fat. So I suppose we might start there, so where you're your calf to be, if enterprise starts, I suppose where your calves come in, we might start there and look at that shed first and go from there. Super job, okay. yeah. So Glenn, for your business here, you, you're calf to beef. Calf, yeah, well it was calf to beef and then as meal prices rose, we found that it was better to get it out as a store based. Yeah. And we found good customers for that. So nothing goes through the live ring, they're all bought private off the yard over the scales. Yeah, so I suppose this is one of the most important buildings in your yard, so this is where, where they come in if they don't get a good start here. This is where they come, they have isolated my dairy suppliers, the men that really gave them a good start. Mm. They're coming, you know, between two and a half to four weeks of age, but this is where they get their first run of vaccines, get them onto my milk, get them sucking from a teat if they weren't before, find out their sucking speeds, and then their batch sack sucking speed, and age and then they're moved up to the next shed. You know. Yeah, so what calf are you buying? What type of calf We're buying, buying? A, with a Hereford supplier and they're coming a wee bit older. Um, superior genetic uh, Angus, so top 1% in terms of terminal traits and self-replacing. Um, there's Belgian Blue, Charlie Coulards. There, there's four men and we get all their calves. Yeah. As long as they've got four legs, we're not really, no Frisian bulls. So. Yeah, and bull calves. Typically, 80% bull, 20% yeah. heifer because we have a customer for heifers and we use them as recipient dams for the pedigree stock. So we're obviously here in a nice May day here at the minute, but say in the spring when the calves come in, what, what do you do when those, those calves land? You, you mentioned about vaccinations. What, what, what are the first things you do when the calf comes in? So they will get, uh, well, I'll give them a couple of days to get them onto the milk and then it's uh, day three is bobby past, ringworm vaccine, which is trichoben now, um, ABR and 30 ml coccidiosis drenched down, down the throat and a multi-min 
right. under the skin. Yeah. And that's their first round of vaccines, yeah. Okay. And say, do you feed it once a day, twice a day? Twice a day. Okay. What are you feeding them with then? Um, putting it in, so we've got this uh, warm flow. Um, the water just goes straight into the, the tank. I can do 60 calves on that tank at any one time. Yeah. Is that agitating it then as well? The yep, that's yeah. mixing it as well. Okay. It's just a JFC cart. I mean, the dream is obviously to get a, an automatic feeder that's doing a really, really rigid wean, more yeah. importantly. But at the moment, this works. I get to see every calf sucking, and I know if a calf doesn't come to the teeth, there's an issue that needs addressed. For what temperature do you feed the milk at? It's 40 degrees. Okay, yeah. Fairly warm. This particular product needs a, a warm mix. Yeah, right. Okay. So it does. Are you feeding on teats then, individual Every teats? Every calf yeah. has its own teat the whole way through until yeah. it goes up to the, the six week or the six pens. Okay. And why teats as opposed to drinking out of a bucket or did you just... Well, I found that, well, it actually, uh, the sucking reflex and the, the heat of the milk will activate the esophageal groove to get the, the milk into the right part of the, mm. the stomach. You don't want anything leaking into the rumen at the start. Yeah. But secondly, I found even if you had a sick calf and you were drinking out of buckets, it will still drink out of a bucket because it's used to drinking water. A sick calf will try and rehydrate itself by drinking water, but they will not suck a teat if they're sick. Right. So it takes too much energy and they don't want to do it. So okay. first indication of a calf doesn't drink off a teat, I know it needs it needs medicated, you know. Okay, so you've jackets there as well. Do you put a jacket on every calf as it comes in? Or? Not this time of year, but this is set up for our next rare, which will start September, October. So yeah. every calf gets a jacket, yeah. Why? Um, I think it's more for the rare to think all oh, them calves is warm, mm -hmm. but I do believe that it definitely improves, you know, health scores. Um, I just probably yeah. shouldn't say this, but it, it does, it takes the, the pressure off as rigid of a, be a bedding. Mm. And we are rigid at bedding, but I don't know. I like uh, they seem to like it being on. Yeah. You put your arm underneath the uh, the jacket. There's some heat comes off it. You know. So if a calf who can't self-regulate its temperature at that age is getting warmed up by a jacket, surely that uh, saved energy is going to performance. I would imagine. Hmm. Trial works very lax on it at the moment. There's nothing really indicating. Yeah. Are you putting straw in the slat? Oh yeah. 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 They're yeah. heavily bedded with straw. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you've, uh, I say, a kind of hay feeder or rough feeder there as well? Straw, yeah, yeah, chopped straw, straw. goes in okay. that, yeah. And why not hay? Um, I thought there's just been trial work done, and uh, it would be fairly rigid on, on reading up about calf performance. Yeah. Um, I find that it'll take them away from the concentrate, hmm. whereas straw is just really filling them up a wee bit. Hay, there's actually a bit of vo feed volume in hay, hmm. and that'll take them away from the concentrate. And as a rare, we need them to be getting their protein source from milk and the expensive concentrate you want to get them on it as quick as quick as you can you know okay they'll pick up that straw just to i don't know start tickling the rumen i suppose but yeah they're not going to perform off it you know yeah so i suppose back to the milk milk powder so what are we looking at here what's what stands out to us okay so this is a uh, the vitalac blue which is like a, a premium milk powder 24 percent protein 20 percent fats a really good ratio um you'll struggle to find any better than that really um Straight away, crude fiber, 0.02%. You only have to declare a decimal place. So if you see, they, you could legally say no percent fiber, which is useless to the calf anyway at this stage. That tells me it's an honest label straight away because they're declaring even in the 0.02. Um, everything else is, is fairly standard, but if you start going down then to the composition of what makes up this milk, whey powder and skim, if you're feeding twice a day, I personally believe there's no difference in whey and uh, skim. It's how that protein source is treated. Um, there is skim in this. The vegetable oil is just palm and cocoa, uh, coconut, which is something that a calf can actually utilize. If you start seeing linseed, um, soy, all those different sources of fat, they're, they're no good to a calf. They're there as fillers. Um, hydrolyzed wheat protein is what you want to see. Um, if you see wheat protein in the composition and you see no percent fiber, well, there's your lay straight away. Um, and then I know that there's immunoglobulins within this milk, which means it's low heat treated. The immunoglobulins within milk has survived the process. If there's no immunoglobulins in the milk, it's high heat treated, which means your 24% protein would probably be more realistically 22%. Sounds a bit like a sales pitch, like, but that is a really good milk powder. I was using it before I worked for the company okay. that sells it. You know? mm. Okay. So how many litres on average would they get a day? They'll start off in two just to get them used to the, the palatability of the milk yeah. and things like that, but I'll drive them straight up to four as quick as I can. Perfect. 
per feed. Per feed, eight okay. liters, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, yeah. On the height of the rear, now that's only from week four through to eight. Yeah. So week not to four is less, and week eight to wean, mm. I'm weaning at 77 days, so. Okay. And are they here for the, what period oh, no, of time? Oh no, they're here for here? three weeks, three the weeks, first okay. vaccination, yeah. until they can batch them accordingly. Yeah. Okay. And then they'll go up to the next pen, which yeah. I'll show you. Yeah. And the roof is quite low, it's not too high, it's that important? There's whatever reason and it's a pure fluke because this 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 shed was here before yeah there's quite there's a, there's a struggles again that get, get to stop any draft yeah they're up off the ground and these uh this area here is letting enough airflow i yeah. did a smoke test that was really really good okay um but it, like i said it's a fluke yeah so just again this is that an isolation, isolation area or what isolation yeah sick calves or yep sick yeah. calves okay. in there yeah yeah okay and just the area behind the wall then oh that's just where we keep our straw and there's just the fridge there with yeah. vaccinations in it fair enough yeah so glenn i suppose we're walking now to your next stage yes calves come out do you uh, walk them up or put them into a carrier no, I, I tend to just do it before feed and they'll follow the teeth so they'll come up here and yeah. then they'll get put into these pens they're pens of six and a six teeth feeder yeah so how many uh six is it six, six calves six yep. calves yeah okay so what's the routine then that's might be different from both is it a are they on a bigger feeder? There, there's, a, there's a hung up uh, six, six teeth compartment feeder. Um, I suppose a wee bit harder to address if a calf isn't sucking its full feed because, you know, there can be a bit of bullying happens at this stage. But again, if they've got a good enough start here and yeah. they're batched to drinking speed, yeah. we don't seem to have any issue. Um, we're now on to not just picking and concentrating, picking at straw. I can really track this. I'll put in a kilo a day. And then watch how quickly that goes, right? We're on the two kilo a day, we're on the three kilo a day, and I can track how much they're eating. Okay. Obviously not um, tell them which calf is eating it, but they tend to sort of stick together and their growth rates are very, very similar at this stage. Right, okay. Um, free choice water uh, and, and little troughs there. Yeah. Straw, they can pick away at that. This is the stage now where I'm trying to get their rumen really going, but they won't be weaned in here. They'll be weaned down in the next shed. Okay, yeah. And do you pile up the straw for the season there? How often would you clean that out? Oh no, straw every 48 hours. So every second day they'll get rebedded. With the old straw taken out? Or, or just nope, pile no, it up just on top, on, of it? on top of it. Then yeah. every, that'll be for one batch. Yeah. Um, after a batch goes through it, then the shovel comes in and we take all the straw out. Fine. So how many days in here in these typically? In the they'll go from week three to week eight in okay. here. Yeah. That real bulk I was telling you about, that they're, they're getting a lot of milk constant. Yeah. And this would typically be full. We've got two batches in there at the moment. In fact, there's only five calves in this pen here. Okay. And there's six here. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Again, a, another fluke that the sheds were there. Um, there's no draft comes up. Um, we've got boards that we hang over these if it is a windy day coming up this direction or if it's a cold. But there's uh, there's no real design behind it in terms of. You're making best use of what was there. Exactly that, yeah. I mean, which was a dairy farm, was it? Was there a no, we, uh, there was at a time, yes, yeah. but uh, most recently, before the calf to beef system, it would have been buying uh, big stores, Charlie Continental sort of yokes, yes. and uh, feeding them and killing them. So the switch, I suppose, from that system to this was there was a lull. You know, it was thirty calves one year, right? We'll do a hundred calves. And there was a gap then where those stores had been killed off and there was no cash flow coming into the farm. Mm -hmm. But now we're in a position where there's cattle leave this farm every month. You know, yeah. the calf the calf rent system rarely stops. Yeah. So how many a month roughly would you be selling? Uh, pr probably only, you know, 15, 20 would yeah. be going. You know, yeah. obviously a big sale off of the grass and a big sale out of the house as well beforehand, yeah. you know. Regular cash flow is important. Yeah, I mean, uh, you have you have to have it. Yeah, you know, two kills a year wouldn't be enough when we no. were doing the cat, when we were doing the beef system. Yes, trying to replicate that dairy farmer getting a nice check every yeah every month. Yeah. you know, yeah, it's easier to pay for things with regular cash flow. Yeah. So this shed's a, a fairly new addition. It it went up twenty twenty one. It was finished on uh, Christmas Eve. And the cattle stayed out until Christmas Eve, just that it was finished, you know? Yeah. Um, bit, bit bigger a pen, still only six calves to a pen. And now we're really pushing, introducing a bit of silage to that chopped straw. There's a bit of straw through the meal as well. 
and starting to pull the milk off them very, very slowly. It's a really long wean from eight weeks to 10 weeks or 11 weeks, sorry. So. Yeah. Uh, Multi-purpose shed. So this shed gets completely turned around at Calvin time. All the springers would be on our right hand side. These pens come up here where Calvin get here. And if you need a section over to the new crush, but yeah. Um, we, we purposely designed it as a multi-purpose shed, so I can keep 24 calves in here at any one time, but come, we would tend to try and have everything weaned by January in our winter hour to allow, to clean the shed out, wash it out, and get the sucklers in ready to, to calve them down. Okay. So how long will it, you're saying about week 11 in this process here, is it? Week, when week eight to week 11, yeah. yeah. And are they heading out then at that point? At that stage, we'll put them out, but we'll still keep straw with them on the grass to, yeah. to sort of try and counteract the grass scars or summer scars. Yeah, okay. But I suppose if you hear, you know, there's no coffin. If I had the selling to a calf for us, like, be really generous with the straw and the bedding. Yes. <clears throat> so as well as your calf to beef, you have... Uh, you yeah, so we, well. we rear heifer calves. Uh, we're just uh, at the process of establishing a pedigree herd, so... All these girls, plus some in the field there that had embryos last year, are mm. synchronized, uh, heat detecting tomorrow and putting embryos in next Friday. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, last year we swept with Speckle Park semen for some commercial cattle, but this year, too much work. We need to concentrate on getting those pedigree embryos in, into, the, into the heifers. Yeah. Are they sexed embryos? No, they're no. not, no. Yeah. We've got three bulls out of four embryos. Okay. <laughs> so it's not really what I wanted last year, yeah. but... I mean, it's quantity. We need to be putting more embryos in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we might have a look at the shed here as, as well, sure. Yeah, you can do. Definitely a historical shed, shed. Yeah. This is here a while, so the shed. Yeah. So the the uh, the plan is to render the walls and put uh, space boarding up and make it look at least like it's part of the new farm. Mm. Um, but I mean, it's slotted shed. There's rubber slat mats down. Um, and it serves a purpose, it's a good shade. There's mm. nothing wrong with it, the air flows fine. And um, we actually put the skylights in only this year. Yeah. So it was a dark shade until then skylights went in. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, it, it holds a lot of stock. A lot of stocks went through that farm, you know, or the shade long yeah. before I was here. So what, what, what use is this now, say? What, what typically ends up here for the winter? Typically it'll be when the calves well, it'll be lumps. This would be the wee lumps would come in here. Um, we have a lot of lumps come off the grass, you know, in around 250 to 300 kilos. Mm. They can't escape the bars. Well, lumps is a, a funny word, and it's, it's kind of stores that they are. Oh, lumps would be um, calves four or five months old. Okay, you know, yeah. Um, okay. Or even under a yearling, let's okay. say. Okay, yeah, wheelings, yeah. yeah. That's what. Is this your main machine for feeding in the winter? Flip us the name machine there for everything, you yeah. know, we couldn't do without it. What is it? What? It's a 520 or JCB 520, 60 is it or something yeah. like that. Side boom, side arm in it. Uh, she'll, she'll, she'll boom out, yes. Yeah. Um, we have, for, for that, to put it into the context, I suppose we have forks for it, shear grab, bale spikes, bucket. Um, Everything, everything gets done yeah. with this machine. We couldn't do without that machine. We could do without a tractor for a week if we had to, but um, yeah, that, that machine gets uh, abused. Um, we keep on top of the service and for it for that very reason, yeah. you know. Yeah. Skinnier tires that we put on at the winter time so we can get up the other beef house, which I'll take to you in, in a wee minute. Yes. But, yeah, that gets, that gets used. Yeah. Probably should have had her washed before you came, like. Yeah. No. <laughs> a machine like that is a huge value on a farm. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's only on the farm, I think six years. Yeah. Beforehand, it was a, a wee international, maybe 1950s sort of thing, mm -hmm. like, you know. Mm -hmm. But I know, uh, I know it, was, uh, it was definitely a good buy on Robert's behalf, he, he loves it. Yeah, good. Another thing we're doing with this shed um, is we're gonna, you see block, we just threw a lack of block in there. We're going to build a, a raised up area to let younger stock, which I was calling lumps, mm. reach the drinkers. You know? mm. I mean, I can put calves in there after weaning if the, if the time comes. You know, you don't like to get them in slots too early, but they're never going to be in them for too long, you know. So yeah. um, last year, yeah, you would have had, you know, maybe 30, 30 calves in there like, at any one time. Okay. And you were buying calves twice a year, is that right? Two periods? 
<laughs> well, that that would be the the plan, but my guys made for me and said, I've got five calves here. Yeah. I'll never turn down a calf if I can help it, you know? Yeah. Because, like I say, that's what allows calves to go at different stages of the year, all year round. Yes. You know? we Like, if you rewind it a year, we were bull beefing in the new shed. Mm. Um, we we tried to keep something going every month, you know. Okay. So what are we looking at here then? So this is our two silos. It's also the cow calf house after they leave the, the single pens, you know. Okay. And it's a big beef house as well. Well, not big, but it's two big pens for beef. Or stores now. Um, down there, there's a drinker. Um, that gets bedded up with sawdust, or sorry, uh, wood chip and straw on top of it. And cows and calves are just sent in there the whole way through the calving period, you know, really just hoping that it dries up ready to get them out. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, we upgraded the LED lights in this only last week. So if I put the lights on, that would, that would really glow up. But yeah. these, you see these raised um, tin, yeah. that's all going to change the skylights and hopefully take down this bottom row of tin and turn that to space boarding as well, just right. to get a bit of air bit of in about the shed, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this is your traditional round roof with lean-to to the side, which you'd see all over the country? Yeah, um, I mean, they used to grape out of this silo or hay down into this feed trough here. To, pay, to turn it yeah, over? Yeah, over the top, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, there was cubicles in here at the time as well when they were milking cows. They used to Robert was telling me they used to eat off the face of the silo yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And then every day with a scraper, push open these trap doors and push out into the yeah. lagoon. Yeah. Um, I'd say there'd be less people at farming if you had to do that. I don't know if I'd, I'd be at it like if you had yeah. to do that work. You know, yeah, no, not many would do it now. No, serious work would have been done here uh, in his heyday now. And yeah. all done by Robert, like, you know, yeah. and his father. Yeah, done the hard way. Done it the hard way, yeah. So I suppose, again, you're like a lot of people, I see there you're feeling from the far side, you're feeling over the edge, are you? Yeah. 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 And pushing it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And works. It works. I mean, putting the barrier up, uh, Robert had actually said last week, he was thinking of maybe shuttering this wall yeah. and going all the way back to the wall yeah. or whatever, maybe moving a silo outdoors and changing mm. this into another, put another uh, slotted tank in or whatever. Mm. This, this shed has so much potential in, in, in sort of evolving as, as, as the farm evolves, but yeah. at the moment, no real plan to do anything except get the skylights done yeah. straight away. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that barrier there is enough to keep the silage back, obviously? 100%, yeah. yeah. Does the job? Oh, I, I wouldn't like to do it without these timbers suddenly, but um, <laughs> no, and it's, look, see, the, the barrier is old. Yeah. And it's possibly coming towards the end of its time. Yeah. You're not doing your silage yourselves, no? No. no. We, all we do ourselves is our own slurry, uh, yeah. top and spraying, yeah. things like that. But in terms of any heavy work, I mean, yeah. personally, I would probably contract out the slurry as well. Yeah. I don't think it, I don't think it justifies buying yourself a new tanker when it comes to that time when a contractor can do your slurry in one day and you're sort of diesel, maybe six or seven days trying to get it done. Yeah. And we mix ourselves as well. Yeah, we, okay. we do our own slurry on top and sort of spray for weeds and things like that, fertilize as well. But yeah. in terms of big machinery work, we're not machinery minded. I mean, if that tractor broke today, neither me nor Robert can fix it. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. we can't service them. We're not mechanically minded. We, we know enough to get by, but if you're at that sort of caper, you need to know your way around a machine. And yeah. I couldn't walk you to the drive shaft that tractor. Like. Yes, yeah. It's a clean tractor, that. That tractor came last year just. Yeah. So it did, yeah. yeah. We, we take 50. Yeah. Okay. So have you more silage to put in here on this? No, we'll or take a second cut of bales. Yeah. I mean, I like having a sort of yeah. a stock of consistent bales for recipients, mm. you know, to keep mm. their dad the mm. same. Um, we were actually going to be a lot last night and decided to just push it and see how much there is, you know. Yeah. Typically, we'd only get a silo full of grass where that race was yeah. so heavy, we're a silo and a half, you know. Okay. And will you put more on top of it again, say, in a couple, in a couple of few no, weeks? No, I don't or think we will, no. I don't think we will. We'll yeah. seal it here today. Yeah. Um, normally, both silos would be full, mm. but one of the silos would be two-year-old. Mm. 
because that's how little stock was here at the time, you know, yeah. you were never getting through. Like Robert has very acreage, you know, yeah. um, but you're never getting through the grass. So you could have done a year without silage if you wanted, mm. but the silage ground wasn't fenced for grazing. So you always kept doing silage mm. and you end up with too much. Um, yeah. Now we're using every blade of grass that we, we cut. So. Okay. Mm.